Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and what you see before me right here is the original Prusa i3 Mark II 3D printer, and this video serves as my official review of this printer. Oh, this is fun. I really, uh, I'm really looking forward to telling you what I think about this thing, so let's not waste any more time. Let's do it. Are you ready? Go. Ah, welcome back. So like I said, this is my uh, official review, but you know, some interesting developments have happened before I'm reviewing this thing. First of all, Tom had himself a review of this printer and he said uh, some pretty wonderful things about it. So let's recap. The original Joseph Prusa i3 Mark II is a 739 euro or $699 kit or a 999 euro or $899 assembled machine that punches way, way above its weight class. And then Bob over at I Like To Make Stuff, he got this printer and he he had some nice things to say about it. So to do a quick recap, you can get it as a kit or fully assembled. It's got a heated bed with auto leveling, fantastic print quality that so far seems to be on par with the Ultimaker 2. And I've been reading good things in chat groups and forum posts and internet blog things and it's like every, Everybody, for the most part, seems to really like this printer. It's been given high marks by a number of very influential people. So what's left for me, right? How does, how can my review add to this printer? How can my review add to the story that this is trying to tell? I'm gonna do my best right now. I've got the stats here on my phone, so I can't forget. Let's, let's go down them. Technically speaking, this is the original Prusa i3 Mark II 3D printer. It's claimed to be 31% bigger build volume, where it's 25 by 21 by 20 centimeters. It's an open frame, open source design. It's got a genuine E3D V6 hot end, and it comes standard with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle that'll take 1.75 millimeter filament. It'll do layers down to 0.05 millimeters. Furthermore, this printer has automatic mesh bed leveling and it'll compensate for cold corners on the heated print bed. The heated print bed itself is covered with a PEI print surface, so most of the time you're not going to need glue, ABS juice, or any sort of assistive bed adhesion materials. It supports PLA, ABS, PET, hips, flexible, Ninja Flex, laywood, lay brick, nylon, bamboo fill, bronze fill, ASA, T glaze, carbon fibers, polycarbonates, and probably whatever else you can throw at this printer. Last but not least, this printer has a high power mode and what's called a silent mode, and we'll get into that as well. When I first received this printer, I did an unboxing and first print video. I took this out of the box, I turned it on, and I printed something from the SD card. The printer printed great, and I thought, well, this is off to a really good start. So over the time that I owned this, I printed various other things. I did start with the PLA that the printer included, and I printed this sorting hat model. As you can see, it's a decent model, and it's printed at 0.2 millimeter layer heights. It's, um, there is a problem with the model, and there's a little skip right here. I'll get into that in just a little bit, but other than this little layer imperfection, the model turned out perfect, and I'm very happy with the result. Once I opened this printer, though, it wasn't long before I was going to go to the Portland Mini Maker Fair with Barnacles and Zachariah and meet Darth Beavis there, who does computers and case modding. So I thought, well, shoot, I should bring this printer to the Portland Mini Maker Fair. And so to celebrate, I printed myself a little mini barnacles on the print bed and then had a little photo session out on the driveway. The printer was stacked on top of the Ultimaker in Zachariah's Jeep and we drove the three hours south from Seattle to Portland and set up at the Mini Maker Fair. Once there, this printer was printing nonstop and I couldn't be happier with the performance. The printer was printing PLA like crazy. I was able to print polycarbonate materials. In fact, uh, I, I threw in some ColorFab Engine while we were in the hotel room setting up our little mini print station before the first day of Mini Maker Fair, and it, it performed 
flawlessly. I, I am incredibly impressed with the E3D V6 hot end on this machine. The rest of the printer is assembled incredibly well and made with very high quality parts. The printed pieces that are on this printer have no signs of wear, tear, cracks, or anything that would cause me to think they are starting to fail. This printer was easy to travel with because this solid metal frame in the middle is easily moved. I can... This printer is really easy to travel with because of this solid metal frame that it's built upon. And sorry, Bender, I gotta move you. You just need to lift it right here and you're good to go. So on this printer, I sent through the Prusa PLA that was included. And here's a big flowalistic Donkey Kong low poly model. And it turned out incredibly well. Again, at 0.2 millimeter layer height. Look at you, gorilla. Look at you go. I also had no issue sending the Polymaker PolySmooth filament through this printer. In fact, I printed two yellow <laughs> little pocket monsters. Uh, we call them Pikachu, I guess. These are the Flowalistics Low Poly Pikachu models, and they were printed completely hollow with the PolySmooth material, and this printer handled these without any problem whatsoever. While at Maker Fair, in the hotel room, I did feed through some ColorFab NGen material and I printed this little garbage can. And this is my first real attempt at printing NGen material. And I was, I was incredibly impressed with the way that this printer handled it. I just guessed at the settings based on some of the research I'd done online. And sure enough, it came out great. In fact, this garbage can itself is the Polymaker PC Plus. This is a polycarbonate material and it printed this trash can as well. The printer printing polycarbonate is one of those materials that does need a little bit of extra bed adhesion. And so a little bit of PVA glue stick or Elmer's purple glue stick on the print bed and you're good to go. One of the things I wanna highlight are these pieces right here. These were printed in the Prusa PLA and therefore a little project that I'm working on and they, they came out great. And if you can tell, I think it's spinning around right now on your screen. These pieces are perfect. I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to, to say they're perfect, but there's a little bit of imperfections. The, these pieces came out perfect. I just put them on the build plate and Simplify 3D, and I changed the temperatures for PLA to 215 on the nozzle, 55 on the bed, and then I hit print. And that was it. And it, it did a glorious job on these perfect, perfect pieces. In fact, look, look at this. <laughs> this is the support structure that was printed underneath the bowl of this. This printed in this configuration, and yet the support structure itself came out all as one piece. And if you look on the underside of the bowl, it's perfect, <laughs> it's just perfect. This support structure itself is almost a work of art, and I have a hard time throwing this away. While down at Maker Fair, I also, I was experimenting with the polycarbonate material, the PC Plus from Polymaker. This is the mesh infill 3D Printing Nerd Maker Coin that Angus over at Maker's Muse made for me using Mesh Mixer. The link for that video is gonna be down in the description. And it turned out interesting. The top layers are garbage on this particular model, which is fine because I wasn't trying to aim for quality top models. I wanted to see how it did with the infill. And the infill is glorious. And I just giggled because it looks so, so good. I'll try to zoom in for you and hopefully you can see just, just how, how well it did inside this model. I was really happy with that. Two more things I wanna show you here. First, the, the tech specs did say that it'll print down to 0 0.05 millimeters, and that's, that's 50 microns, that's nothing. It already looks so good at 0 0.2 millimeter layer heights. Can 0 0.05 millimeters really make a difference. And I printed this rook with the DNA strand in the middle in 0 0.05 millimeter layer heights. And the exterior where it shows the brickwork on this rook is phenomenal. It looks incredible. The DNA strand in the middle started out good, which is amazing on its own. It did start to fail a little bit higher up, but the staircase looks good. You know, the printer's a champ and it, it did it. This is a really cool model and the printer did an amazing job with it. From these models here, there's kind of one more that I wanted to show you. And let me make some room here. 
Sydney wanted to print something to take to her friends at school, and I had the PC Plus material on this printer, which is the polycarbonate. Sydney knew how to select it from the screen, and so she picked the, the Pikachu that she wanted to print, and it printed it out. But what's interesting about this, polycarbonate is a notoriously difficult material to print with. I put some PVA glue on the PEI sheet here, and I set the temperature to 260 on the nozzle, and I think it was 75 on the bed. And Sydney would just hit print and go, and then when it was done, she would take all of the models off and clear the, the, um, the skirts and the little wiper in the front and then hit print again and go. And Sydney printed a whole bunch of little miniature Pikachus. Look at these guys. These are little polycarbonate Pikachus and the printer did fantastic. There were 60 on the build plate at a time and I would hit go on the printer and it would just print the 60 with no issues. All of them stuck and it just looked, looked, it looked like a little marching band going back and forth, a little marching band of Pikachus and it was great. And Sydney just grabs from this pile and takes them to school and gives them out to her friends. We've come to that point in the video where I want to tell you what I don't like and what I like and then give you some final thoughts on this printer. But in order to tell you about something I don't like, I do need to start a print. One of the things that I don't quite like about this printer is the spool holder. And in this spool holder here, there's a, there's a gray 3D printed bar. And that bar was printed at the Portland Mini Maker Fair when I wanted to put a spool on here that wouldn't just accept these two orange holders. And that's, ah, that's such a sorry dig at this printer because I fixed it by 3D printing an addition to this printer, and that's the beauty of 3D printing, right? You can 3D print things that fix problems, and that's what I did. I think Joseph Prusid would be very proud of my accomplishment for this spool holder. The only other legitimate concern I have about this printer is that high power mode, it's a little loud. Here, let me, let me clip off my microphone and give you... You can run in silent mode, and let's see if I can do this from here. You go to tune, and then mode, and now silent mode. Okay, here is high power mode, silent mode. These are little feet, and I printed these in PC Plus material, and these little feet go on the bottom, and they're vibration isolation feet and it, it allows the printer to print quieter. So here's what I want to do. I want to put these on the printer to see if it's, uh, if it'll quiet it down. It did for me earlier, so it's worth a try. I'm going to put these on while the printer's running. Is this the best idea ever? No, no, it's not. <laughs> Let's see if this works. Okay. Okay. The feet are on, the printer, and you just saw me install them live <laughs> right there. I actually did plan that. That's pretty awesome. Uh, the noise has been greatly reduced, and I'm in the high powered mode right now. and you can't hear a lot of the noise. Here, let's see what happens when I go to silent mode using the vibration isolation feed. It's incredibly quiet. So my dig on the printer in that it's loud is easily mitigated with a 3D printed 
part. That, I don't know, that just seems to make sense because Joseph Prusa and his Prusa team are big believers in open hardware. It makes sense that I could take what he has made and upgrade it a bit with a part that then made it quieter. Okay, so my two digs on the printer are the filament spool holder, which I solved by 3D printing a part, and the loudness of the printer in high power mode, which I solved by 3D printing parts. It's just poetic how this printer fixed itself. Now, what do I like about this printer? Everything. I like everything about this printer. I like how easy it is to use. I like how easy it was to transport to a new location and set up in seconds flat. I like that my kids know how to use this. I like that it comes in an easily assembled kit. I like the build area. I like the bed leveling. I like how well, it, I just, I like everything about this printer. Everything. And I think with what others have said and what I've experienced, I'm completely justified in saying that. So the original Prusa i3 Mark II, hands down, is the best printer on the market for your money. With that in mind, all right, give it a thumbs up if you want one of these or if you have one of these or if you had a really, really good day. Leave a comment down below if you think I'm full of crap or if you have another opinion or if you wanna say hi or if you wanna high five. A very big thanks to my patrons who support me at patreon.com. Your financial support came in extremely helpful this month and I can't thank you enough. I'm gonna let this print. You guys go be awesome. Hey, don't forget, hug each other more. I love you guys. As always, high five.